anyways, so how many of you felt FOMO of anything? I have. I have felt FOMO for Indian word camps, and I try to make sure that I attend all of them. Right? So I'm happy to call on stage our next speaker, who is from Sweden, and she's going to talk about uh, how to prioritize, right? So that you can convert your FOMO to the joys of missing out, right? So let's welcome Hena on the stage, please. Good afternoon, WordCamp Asia. Lovely to see you all. Hi, my name is Hannah swain -Lovic. I'm based in Stockholm, Sweden, and I work for Automatic in WooCommerce Happiness. I love figuring out how to do more with my time. I'm sure this is something that you all have thought about. Productivity methods, time management. The more I can get done, the more I have time to spend on what's interesting, right? It turns out that's not really the case. And I don't usually get to those more interesting things. This has been a really meaningful topic to me over the last year, so I'm looking forward to sharing this with you today. We're going to review FOMO, the fear of missing out, and then look at how to move towards JOMO, the joy of missing out. Let's get started. So what are all of the things that you do because you're afraid you're going to miss out? Do you watch one more episode of that TV show to find out what's going to happen? Stay up really late and forget to be late to work, yeah? Do you go to meet friends, even when you're tired, because they could be doing something cool and you don't want to miss out? When you're just about to sign off for the day, but a new GitHub issue comes in, do you stop to check it because, you know, it could be something that you'd want to know about and help fix? Do you go to one more WordCamp, one more event, just because you could connect with interesting people or see a helpful event? These are the things that you do because you're afraid of missing out. Sure, you do them because you want to, but because you also want to make sure you don't miss something interesting. How many of you have experienced FOMO? Yeah, that's just about everybody. Thank you. Me too. And the WordPress community is helpful, it's kind, it's supportive. That makes it really hard to let go and to not be deeply engaged and to say, no, I'm, I'm going to step away and do something else. FOMO leads to pressure on yourself to do just a little bit more. And it's not sustainable over the long term because you aren't sticking to your own boundaries and you're not doing what you really want to do. So that brings us to the next concept, the efficiency trap. You know the concept of a Sisyphean task? According to ancient Greek myth, the gods punished Sisyphus for his arrogance by sentencing him to push an enormous boulder up a hill, up all the way up, and then it rolls all the way back down. And he is condemned to repeat this, over and over and over for the rest of eternity. What a horrible punishment. In today's version, Sisyphus would empty his email inbox, or maybe Slack, lean back, take that deep breath, and then hear the familiar ping, you have new messages. I see smiles and reactions, you know this one. No matter how often you clear your inbox, there will always be more email. No matter how many different productivity methods you use, be that for email, be that for anything else, you'll get faster. You'll be able to process it faster, but not necessarily more impactful. Because, again, there will always be more email. So it's an efficiency trap. And the important thing here is why do you clear that inbox? Is it your job? Is it FOMO? Is it because you're clearing your deck so that you can get to those bigger, more important tasks. And I can't answer this for you, but it's up to you to figure out what that is so that you can move past this Sisyphean task. Recognize that it's easy to get stuck in tasks like this. And understand what's pulling you into it. Why is it important for you to do this? 
The next step is, what is it that you actually want to do with your time? Is it answer that email? Or is it plan, create, implement something cool? And that brings us to hopefully something really cool. Jo FOMO is opposite of JOMO, the joy of missing out. JOMO is about the quality of what you're doing rather than the quantity. I'm doing a lightning talk. We're definitely bringing it down into uh, efficiency. It's about switching your mindset from I have to be here to I'm happy to be right here. This is where I want to be. It's OK to not be everywhere all the time. It's about finding contentment and fulfillment in the activities and moments you choose to engage in. For me, it's the joy of giving what I'm doing right now my full attention because I know it's the most important thing that I could be doing right now. So, OK, we've got JOMO. How do you get from FOMO to JOMO? Whenever you, oh, I think I'm missing a slide. We'll figure this out. So whenever you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And this is a really important concept because your time is finite. You can't say, you can't do everything you want. You can't say yes to everything. So instead, you're saying no to something else. Um, so your time and energy are finite. What's also important here, figure out what are your BHOGs. I know, it's a funny acronym. It's your big, hairy, audacious goals. And if you don't know them, think about them. What are those really big, complicated things that you want to achieve? Um, and then, once you know those, you can set your boundaries. You can decide what you're going to be passionate about. You can also, one moment please. Hmm. Sorry about that. I think I am missing a slide and I'm busy trying to remember what was on it. Yes, we've got it. Uh, choose what you're going to fail at. I know, failure is totally a loaded term and you don't want to say that you're going to fail at something, but I'm saying it that way because it's important. Because if you decide what you're not going to do, then you can spend the rest of that time on what you are going to do. And that's important, because otherwise you're trying to do everything. So what are you going to fail at? Um, aha, there we go. We weren't missing a slide, I just got confused. So, we uh, go from FOMO to JOMO, we figure out your BHOGs, your big, hairy, audacious goals, you decide what you're going to fail at, you do what's going to give you joy, even if it's not technically good use of your time. Not every hobby needs to become a side hustle. And I'm saying this because this is a hard one for me. I've been learning obscure writing shorthands and alphabets, not because it is remotely useful, but because I can write in code that nobody else can read and I find it really fun. So what do you do just because it's fun? If this is a tough concept, let's get a little bit philosophical and think about the concept of cosmic insignificance. Our lives are blips in the eyes of the cosmos. Our actions right now matter to those around us, our friends, our colleagues, our families, but in 100, 500, 1,000 years, will your actions actually matter? For most of us, probably not. And in many ways, that's wonderful because it's freeing. It means that what you do right now matters, not that you have to get everything right for the rest of the future. Figure out what's important to you and do that. So what do you do to get from FOMO to JOMO in your life. Thank you very much for your time, WordCamp Asia. It was lovely to talk with you.